Obadiah says height is not a place to proclaim your proudness. Names and places. And opposing Israel and Judah. All of this and more coming up next on Quick Study TV, Bible Discovery TV. Stay there as we continue. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembry. And I'm Janice. And this is Quick Study Television Program, where today we're going to focus on another incident that happened in chronology in the Bible. Now, let's take a look at this. We're looking at Obadiah and Psalm 82 to 83. We're going to focus on Obadiah 1. We learned that height is not a position to proclaim your authority but your humility. What is that humility? We'll talk about that and much more coming up in just a moment. Right now, Corey is here with Bible history and archaeology. Corey? Well, today the nation of Edom shows up in our scripture reading. So we're going to be taking a look at the history of the nation of Edom. Now, there are two very well-known historic figures that will come up uh, during our study today. Okay, good. Some history on Edom. Interesting mm -hmm. stuff. So now what do you have? Well, I have a do you know question for Corey and for you. Do you know the prophecy of Obadiah says that the captives of the children of Israel will possess the land of the Canaanites as far as what town? Now, if you don't have your Bible with you, I'll give you a hint next segment. All right, that and more. Stay there as Quick Study continues. The nation of Israel, even when it's split into the two kingdoms of northern Israel and southern Judah, uh, the way the plot of land sits in it, it sits very similar today. You can just look at it on a modern map. Uh, it was surrounded by many different uh, uh, nations and territories that during different times were actually quite hostile to the lands of Israel and Judah. Now, one of the nations that was sometimes hostile, sometimes friendly, was the nation of Edom. And that's who we're going to look at right now. The region of Edom is a mountainous land south of the Dead Sea. It is rich in copper and iron deposits that have been utilized by the likes of Egypt and Israel. The Edomites, that is, the people living in Edom, were the descendants of Esau, the brother of Israel's founding father, Jacob. Though related to Israel, Edom has a rocky and violent history with their cousins. The Edomites did not allow passage through their territory to Moses during the Exodus. They fought with King Saul and were taken over eventually by King David. Even when they were a part of Israel, the Edomites often raided Judean towns and eventually they revolted. Like many people groups of the area and much of northern Israel, Edom was soon taken over by the Assyrian Empire. A few hundred years after this takeover, the Edomites were referred to by a different name, Idumeans. By 40 BC, many Idumeans had been converted to Judaism, and one rose in allegiance with Rome to become the ruler, the king of Judea. His name, Herod the Great. 
want to take some time here after our study of the nation of Edom uh, to tell you about a DVD that I have recently done with my dad. Now, in this DVD, I teach specifically about the time period of the kings of Israel and Judah. And we really get into the archaeology and the history of this time period, and we're able to demonstrate using finds in modern history uh, how these figures that we see in the Bible really were historical figures. They're not mythological, and uh, they are actually verified several different times by pagan nations, which is non-believing uh, nations, non-followers of Yahweh, uh, and also archaeological finds from within the ancient community of Israel as well. Now, this DVD is called Discover the World of the Bible, Episode 1. And if you would like to get your copy, then you're going to have to write to us or call us, or you can even order it uh, online at Bible discoverytv.com. Now we make it available to you at a, do a donation of $25 or more, and that will help us if, with some of the production costs and mailing it to you. Okay, thank you very much, Corey. Now a donation of $25 or more. Here is the address. It is P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. Send right away and get your copy by calling 724-733-8336 in the United States of America. In the beautiful country of Canada, send to 519-940-8338. It's time to explore the superheroes of the Bible. Though you are in a high place, God will touch you and bring you down. Though you are in a prideful position, God will find you and make you real. Though you are costly, God will capture you. This is the message of Obadiah. It is a prophecy to a nation that is established among the high places of battle. The words of Obadiah are wrapped around his cities. Now, superheroes of the Bible know that the high places of earth are settled and fixed. Taking stock in these locations is frivolous and ignorant. Now, this is a battle for the soul. Superheroes of the Bible are welcome to explore its roots. Obadiah chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. The Vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom, We have heard a report from the Lord, and a messenger has been sent among the nations, saying, Arise, and let us rise up against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be greatly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you, you who dwell in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. You who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. If thieves had come to you, if robbers by night, oh, how you will be cut off! Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If grape gatherers had come to you, would they not have left some gleanings? Oh, how Esau shall be searched out, how his hidden treasures shall be sought after. All the men of your confederacy shall force you to the border. The men at peace with you shall deceive you and prevail against you. Those who eat your bread shall lay a trap for you. No one is aware of it. Will I not in that day, says the Lord, even destroy the wise men from Edom and understanding from the mountains of Esau? 
Then your mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that everyone from the mountains of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Obadiah chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Thanks for joining us. Rod Hember here, along with Bible Discovery TV and Quick Study Television. Now, as we figure out this particular passage in the Bible, it's prophetic. We understand some interesting things before we hit the overview. Now, I want to talk to you just for a moment about this because this speaks differently as we look at the total scripture. So the overview will help us focus on a specific event, and then we'll take a look at it for interesting or for, for sure. Now, in the overview, I call this strong height because Obadiah is a country that is built on the height, if you would. And the reading assignment is Obadiah 1 in Psalm 82 through 83. Now, the focus on Obadiah is Obadiah chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Now, it's important because as we look at this, we're looking at the opening chapter in Obadiah to understand exactly what's happening. This is important. So with that in mind, let's explore the front half of the scripture. Here then is the word of God. Now, Obadiah says the vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom, we have heard a report from the Lord and a messenger has been sent among the nations. He said this, arise and let us rise up against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be greatly despised. Now that's an interesting point. Now here's a nation who was up on the high places and they could see down, you know, on the various points of battle. They thought that to be a great advantage. But actually what was happening here is God was saying, you don't understand. I'm higher than you. I'm going to look down on you from where I am. Now that is an interesting point and it brings me to this particular position. Height is not a position or is not the position to proclaim your established authority. God will bring you down. God is reminding ancient uh, Obadiah that, listen, I'm going to bring you down, man, ancient Edom. I'm going to bring you down and I'm going to take you down to the low places because you figure that you're, you're high, you're great, you're wonderful, but God is higher than you. And that's important as we look at this. Now we look at the next scripture and it tells us something interesting and something worth looking at as we check for the future. Now in Obadiah chapter 3, 1 verses 3 to 4, we learn about something to say. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You who dwell in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. You who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Though you ascend on high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. <laughs> Can you see this now? Can you see and understand what's happening? Obadiah had thought they were set on high and they couldn't be touched and they're, you know, ruling over things. But God says to them, I am higher than you. And he says, that's not the place to gather your pride. And so we look at this position and we understand that if we put ourselves up, we will draw down. Now, height is not the place to be prideful in position. It is the place to consider that God is not limited. Now, when you explore this idea of height and you look at all this and you say, well, you know, I'm pretty high up here. I've got my position or I've got my place and I'm, I'm all set up. Well, you, you need to think about this. God is higher than you. You are not God and God is higher than you. And it's important for you to understand the importance of your, your levity with God. Very important. Now, with that in mind, we come then to the last particular reading in the scripture, which is this. We have Obadiah 1 verse 5. If thieves had come to you, if robbers by night, oh, how would you be cut off? Would they not have stolen till they have enough? If grape gatherers who have come to you, would they not have left some for the gleanings? That's an interesting point. 
He's saying, now, if somebody were to invade you, even in your height and even in your great dignity, would you not be desperate for change where you are with what you have? Now, that's an interesting question that God asks, and it's a question we should be ready to answer. Now, we have to understand this. Height is not the position to claim your strength. It is the place to call upon God's protecting power. I cannot emphasize that enough. Height is not your position to claim your strength. It is the place where you are calling upon God's protecting power. Now, that is very important. Again, I say to you that if somebody begins to uh, plan against someone and they go in to take them down and they're working on them and they're doing all this stuff, but if God makes a decision to stop the thievery or move in and protect, then there's nothing you can do about it. It's real. It's interesting. And so as we look at this position, we need to understand what our place is. Our place is interesting. Now, let me set this up for you. So a guy goes in and, and he assumes that he is miraculous. He's above everybody else. And he's going to come in and take over. And so he comes in and he gets ready to take over. But God presumes upon him that he is not going to take over. And he is stopped no matter how big he is, no matter how or who he is. He could be the president of the United States. He could be the prime minister. Doesn't matter. God will not let him do what it is that he is to do. Now, God has patience and God has understanding and God has relevance. And so it's important for us to realize that God is doing something specific. So let's keep this in mind. This is very important. God has a position for everybody, but he also has a place. And we cannot move on somebody unless we contact God first. Now, you and I are going to continue studying the nations around Israel and Judah that were often hostile towards Israel and Judah. Now, the nation we're going to be studying right now is the nation of Moab. Now, Moab has already played a role in the history of Israel up until this point. Uh, but the study today, this is going to be a broad study on the nation of Moab, and it really sets up well the study that I'm doing tomorrow, which is about a specific monument from one of the Moabites kings that directly confirms an account found in the scriptures. The nation and people of Moab appear many times in the historical records of the Bible. From their origins ascribed to Lot and his daughter in Genesis chapter 19, to a frightened Moab hiring Balaam the prophet to curse Israel, all the way to the time period of the kings of Israel, this nation has an interesting place within scripture. Related to Israel via Abraham's nephew Lot, the land of Moab was located just east of the Dead Sea. Framed by the Dead Sea on its east and a desert on its west, Moab seems to have boasted a surprisingly lush climate thanks to seasonal winter rains. Within the book of Ruth, the Moabites, her Israelite family traveled to Moab to escape a famine and drought. In 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 4, King Mesha of Moab is named a sheep breeder. This King Mesha is at once an enemy of the worst kind, willing to sacrifice his firstborn son and crown prince of Moab just to win a battle against Israel and Judah. And he is a recorder of invaluable history that benefits the Bible student today. The history that King Mesha is credited with preserving is called today, interchangeably, the Moabite Stone or the Moabite Inscription. It was discovered in 1868, and it verifies the history of 2 Kings chapter 3. While much of the history of the interchanges between Israel and Moab are as violent enemies, there are brief periods of peace between the nations. They can be seen in the book of Judges, Ruth, and 1 Samuel chapter 22, when King David relies on Moab for protection. 
Eventually, the nation of Moab, along with many others, was conquered and absorbed by the empire of Assyria in the late 8th century BC. How accurate is the Bible's history? Can we trust the Old Testament when it describes the kings of Israel? What are the archaeological discoveries that have opened up the world of the Bible, and how should we understand them? Join Rod Hembry and Corey Hembry Babechko as they discover the world of the Bible. In episode one, Rod and Corey will explore the reasons behind Israelite kingship. They will search out and explain archaeological finds that display the accuracy of the Old Testament. They will show you records from Egypt, Assyria, and Babylon that reflect biblical events. And they will show you the ancient signatures of some of Israel's most influential kings. Discovering the World of the Bible, Episode 1, is offered to you for a donation of $25 or more. If you would like to receive your copy, write to us in Canada and around the world at P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2, or call us at 519-940-8338. In the United States, write to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 156. 156- 6680150 or call us at 7247338336 Rod Hember here along with Janice. Thanks for staying with us. It's great to have you here. And listen, this next time on the Quick Study television program, we are going to be dealing with 2 Kings 1 to 4, where we are going to stand and focus on a place to stand is not the lies of human thought. It is the humility of man. It's going to be a very important study as we talk about that. I think you'll find it very, very interesting. Now, you have a study for us today, Did You Know, from the Bible, what we're reading today. That's right. We're focusing on Obadiah, and so that's where I have taken this question from. Do you know the prophecy of Obadiah says that the captives of the children of Israel will possess the land of the Canaanites as far as what town? Now, here's a hint for you. Elijah was hosted by a widow and her son there, whose bin of flour and jar jar of oil miraculously never ran out. So she was from this place as well. Do you know what that is? Okay, Corey, so this place where this flour and all this never ran out, where is it? (laughs) Okay, well, thank you, Mom, for that hint because I really needed it. I had no idea until you gave that hint. Um, I'm trying to remember. It's something like uh, Zarephan. Zarephan? Well, she's really, really close. Zaratan is actually, let's see if I can describe this. The Jordan River, when the Israelites were getting ready to cross into the promised land, God separated the waters and it stood up in a heap in the town of Zaratan. The town I'm looking for is close, Zarephath. She was from Zarephath. And I think you sort of blended the two of those together. So I would say you pretty much got 95 (laughs) percent. Zarephath is the name of the city where Elijah went. That's right. And there the the lady was actually going to have her last meal. That's right. She was a widow. She said, I have enough Mm -hmm. for my son and myself and we're going to go and we're going to prepare our last meal. That's right. And this is interesting because it is a Phoenician city. Hmm. And uh, what's interesting about that is that she is not an Israelite. And so that's important in that time period. It's very, very interesting. And the name of this place could possibly mean smelting or refining. It's true. And I mean, they probably did that in that place because a lot of the cities Mm -hmm. or the various areas had names to that effect. All right. Well, if you would like to find us and discover us, you can do so on Twitter. It is Rod at thestreamtv.com or at Rod, capital R, small O, D, underscore TV. Now, that's how you find us on Twitter. You want to stay on there to find out what's going on and who's doing what. 
Uh, we're doing all kinds of things on that one. And then, of course, you're going to want to find us on Facebook, Charles R. Hembry. It's a formal name, actually. Charles R. Hembry on Facebook. And then, of course, to write to us, you need to get your pen and get your paper out. And here it is, P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668. 0150. In Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. If you would like to call us and reserve your order in advance, 724 733 8336 in the United States of America, and in Canada, 519 940 8338. Now look at that center there. You can see that. That is the Roku box. And if you would like to get a copy of that, hook, it up, hook us up, you can do so. Best place in the world is not to be in a place where God can take your gifts and cancel them. But it is the place where God can get into your gifts and be Lord over them. God is above all laws of the universe and he's never under any of them. So the question is, what pleases God and what does not? It is a good time to consider how to take your gifts and give them back. It is a good day to be one who serves God with your gifts. This is the best way to give a gift. So we pray, Lord, I give my life to you 100%. Help me to see that I'm not the Lord of my life. Well, in our Strength in Your Mind segment today, we have a very interesting Bible question. The question is this, where does the Bible say, Arise, O Lord, in your anger, and lift yourself up because of the range of enemies. The rage of enemies. Wow, that's important. Now, it's important to think about this. If you think you know the answer, visit our website at BibleDiscoveryTV.com and then go to Strengthen Your Mind. It'll take you to the page and you can check it out. It's very interesting today. Also, check in the letter because the letter we send hasn't. But you know, Jesus wants to meet you. And that's the reason this program is here, so you can find Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Now, let me tell you, he made himself real. He died on the cross and he rose again. And he came to give us life and we must choose him. He's chosen us, but we must choose him. So my question is, who have you chose today? Come to Jesus now, today, pray today. The Quick Study Bible Power Guide is available online right now and waiting for you. If you give online, you can access it immediately. Go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and click on the donate button, donate in any amount and access the Power Guide today. Thank <laughs> you.